Okay. okay, we're gonna start this live. It's our first ever, so good luck to us and you if you're watching. If you have any questions when you start watching on the leg workout or why we're doing it, just drop them in the comments below. And if I don't get to them now, we'll answer them late, later. And he'll answer them also. So uh, he's the man behind the physique. So if you guys have any questions for my physique, my Olympia prep, or bodybuilding in general, direct it at Chino and we'll answer them later. All right, here we go. Love to butcher. So we're gonna explain it today for you guys. Probably way to do this. One exercise a lot of people love to butcher, or uh, maybe they just don't know how to do it, right? So first, what you're gonna do is hinge back from the hips, slightly flexion of the knee, you want your chest in front of your feet, hips behind your heels, okay, boots behind your heels. You're gonna take a short step to the side, short step to the side. Right, let's go right now. Now stand up, take some time here. I'm gonna show you that. In position. Now take a step to your right, now come and down. This is what you don't do. Come back this way. So this is what you don't do, all right? This is quads, glutes, and whatever the fuck. Um, yeah, that's not what we're doing today, okay? So another thing you don't do is the penguin. Do the penguin. <laughs> Wobble to the side. Lean to the side, back and forth. Come back this way. Come back this way. Look at Jack and the penguin. Look it, you don't do this either, okay? You want to resist leaning to the opposite side as you move. So, you want to take a step this way without leaning to the opposite side, okay? Step. Now, Jackie, come back. Now, stand up. Put your feet closer to the other way. Don't get involved. Now, get in position. And now, try to step to the side. It's impossible for you not to lean to the opposite side when you do that. So, you want to make sure that your legs are parallel. Your feet are parallel. Or not parallel. Line up with your hips. Right? So, the body position is very important. And how you drive. You drive from the heel. Now again, you want to make sure your feet are not turned out because then that will make that will be like you'll be moving from the hip flex. If you're bouncing up and down, if you're leaving to the side or your feet are turned out, it's wrong. Now, in this case, you're moving from your glutes. Now, if you're doing a circus and class, and, you know, it's like a, you know, it's like a total body workout just for a burn, and you want to bounce up and down, get your quads involved, then that's fine. But if that's not the case, get together. If you're watching, can y'all hear what he's saying? Give me a thumbs up or no if you can't hear us. <laughs> so weird looking. Okay. Don't we'll bring your feet together. I thought it was. Alright. Right. Thumbs up. Alright, that's what's up. Alright, so that is like right in the way of what I wanted to do, so uh, we're gonna take our time here. So, if you wanna run a little circuit and some adduction, some ABAD movements here? Yes. Continue the warm up. So, we're gonna move you around here. This is basically how we just getting her ready for the 400 pound squats that she does. You know? <laughs> you know? 
you know, um, trying to take you out. We have Pro Body Fitness, by the way. Basics are the best. Um, but now, as you become a little more advanced, right? So, so check it out. You got five body weights, right? Or five people that's going to compete. And you think you can the basic movements, right? Um, the one with the better genetic on constant day is going to win. Simply because him doing the simple um, compound movements is developing the muscle to his you know, potential and like in every angle it's just, it's just popping. You got a Ronnie Coleman versus me, right? <laughs> I'm gonna lose all day. Um, especially using just a basic movement. So what we do is you gotta figure out how this applies to you, right? So you gotta use the basic movement, but you gotta apply them in the right way. So a lot of times everybody can't um, stimulate certain areas by doing just a simple squat, you know? And depending on your lymph length, um, the length of your limbs or body mechanics or anything like that, um, it's gonna determine where that weight is actually falling. When it comes to your glutes and your quads, like who's actually doing the more work, the most of the work, right? Everybody's so different. Or they have imbalances, compensation panels, right? That just like, they just throw the exercise totally off. Um, and you be doing this year after year after year trying to figure out why is it not working for you, why is it working for somebody else, right? And you get a very, very little results and you're like, damn, another year like this will be fine. Truth is, it's not gonna be enough. You gotta figure out why it's not working for you. That's what bodybuilding is all about. You might never get back. Got a shot out in my world. Y'all don't get the next back. Play for keeps round here. Pride is deep round here. Shoot is creep round here. Hard to sleep round here. Life is cheap round here. Grim reap round here. Spill milk, get wiped up. We don't eat brown here. We just going hard. We raising sons, we growing daughters. Came a long way and working on going forward. Grew up not knowing forward, seeing no ball. But no story gets better because I know the author. Keep reading, it's a comeback story. Ultimately, you guys gotta figure out 
where you weak at. And I don't mean like the squat position or like the bench press or whatever, like on your mechanics, right? With the shoulder stability, hip stability, asymmetrical weight shifts, um, you know, um, you know, uh, ankle function, you know, all that's gonna determine like your results, you know, like how you're gonna develop. Um, yeah, sometimes people just don't know those things, you know, they don't know that they're off like that, and, you know. Whatever he said also. Um, if you have any questions for him on what he's saying or what I'm doing, go ahead and comment in the comments. We may not get them now, but we will get them uh, later um, after my workout. I'll answer any of them. And also, Chino will answer them. So you'll have it from him, not just from me. Pro Body Fitness in Mamaroneck. If you guys haven't checked this gym out yet, it's pretty awesome. Um, I'm here three days a week training with Chino. Um, it's in Mamaroneck. It's right off the train from the city if you live in the city. If you're visiting New York, it's about 30 minutes from Manhattan, so it's pretty easy to get to. Actually, while you, um, while she waits for that a machine in the corner will take you around this gym right here, right? Um, the atmosphere is crazy. The atmosphere. I'm gonna go say, I'm gonna go say what's up to the people at the front, right here. He's not gonna like me for this. <laughs> He's not gonna like me for this. I'm catching him off guard. Nobody likes that. No, protein ball. Protein ball. That's right. Protein ball. Right. You know who that is. Yeah, so this is where to be, man. Yeah. This is where we at. Ain't nothing but knowledge over here. A lot of good equipment. And this guy's all right, too. He's, he's okay. <laughs> I'm on camera. Wow. We outside, right? <laughs> Having fun with this bullshit. <laughs> yeah, but all seriousness, if you guys um need some help, let me know. I got your answers, B. I'm real cocky with this stuff because I really know my shit. Seriously. Anything else out of these doors, I'm a fucking retard. Over here? Yeah. Um, you know, the gym is All right. So I'm gonna show y'all a little trick here, right? So we're gonna do some abs before quads. Right, Jacqueline? Yes. Go. That's all, we do the trick. Okay. No, in all seriousness, this is not abs. These are leg raises, but um, leg raises doesn't actually train your abdominals, right? They, tra they train your hip flexors. Part of the hip flexor is called the rectus femoris, which is right here. Jack, can you say? This right here. I'm trying to get that development. I challenge you guys to show me one exercise that we do for quads that actually hit that area straight on. There's not one. Um, very little percent of that muscle is being trained doing, you know, other exercises and stuff, but it's not like this. If you're not genetically gifted with that, or you wasn't like a runner before, you know, like, you're gonna do that type of development, you kind of, um, probably be, you know, a little behind on that. Uh, so, this exercise here, when you're lifting the leg, trains that area. Trains the red fem. We fix this. I may be talking too fast for y'all. I don't even know if y'all hear me, but this is the next size to hit the rectus fem, the rect fem or rectus femoris or the, some people call it the intercostal muscle. <laughs> it's not that. I didn't say that. It is not that. Please don't run with that. So right here. So I like to like hit it, stimulate it, and then go right into a bigger movement. It's a very hard to reach area. No exercise actually hit it that direct than this. So we start there. So when she's on stage and she hits that front relax shot, you see all that detail. And that was that was our trick. This is the secret. You're welcome. Thank you. 
together and squat and squat squats and you can find her. There she go right there. Good. So we're gonna super set those too. Okay? Right now she started with um both legs over there on the Yeah, so she started over there. Now we're gonna go but this time she's gonna do one leg on the, on the um the lips and then plus one leg over here. We're gonna go right into one leg over here to super set. This is my least favorite exercise ever made in the history of the world. Okay, this one. Hi, Layla. Cheers, too. Probably one of the best. Let's put our pointed foot on um, whatever feels most comfortable to you. <laughs> but on that question, I prefer a pointed foot. Um, feels better for me and my legs. But I think that Chino would agree with me, whatever feels best on your body and you can stabilize the best with. I can't even see this shit. Get a close up of my face and shit. This ain't cool. <laughs> Yeah, um, guys, seriously, try this. You're not gonna regret it. This shit is crazy. Um, it really activates that muscle. Try doing that and apply it with like a squat, leg press, whatever you prefer. You know, sitting on, um, if you're having split squats, whatever. This shit is crazy. I guarantee you're never gonna feel something like this. You never feel something like this. That pump is deep. What's up guys, anyone who joined, we're at Pro Body Fitness. I'm doing my leg workout with Chino this morning. Um, we are answering any questions that you may have on my Olympia prep, my Olympia workouts, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, he's gonna explain some of the exercises we do and why we do them. They may be a little bit different than a lot of exercises that other people do. Um, I've got a lot of lower body injuries. Um, 
So we've had to work through that over the past nine years and grow my legs in maybe different ways than most of the other fitness athletes. So some of the stuff is unique, but it works. Um, so keep watching. So right now I'm doing a superset with the cable knee highs and then split squats. Split squats. <laughs> I can't say them as much as I can't do them. Um, no, I can do anything. Um, they're really hard for me. We don't go super heavy on any of this. Again, we train with intention and efficient exercises. Um, Evogen's Amino Jack during my workouts. We've implemented this my entire prep while I'm on low calories, try to maintain lean muscle mass while I'm cutting down body fat. It helps um, to help me recover, all of those things. So check out Evogen's Amino Jack. Use my code JACKSB and DM me with any questions on their supplements or anything like that. Ready 
anybody gives those a try, let me know. Let, uh, let Jack and I know how I was, okay? That's just great. Talk about sweet, give me the Come on, Jack. I see some questions about this exercise here. More importantly, when you're trying to hit the quads, and let's do you kind of just want to be like straight up with it, right? Jack and move forward a little bit. So that right there is gonna it's gonna primarily gonna hit the glutes more, you know? But at the end of the day, it's just about being straight up and up and down. And driving from the heel up. Hip flexion and leg extension. Apply the one. Show those quads. Then apply some. Apply a bigger movement to me. Step it to the side. I'm like, I want you to see Chak and do the work, right? That's my rep range change throughout my prep. I'll let Chino answer this one as far as my rep range. That's my rep range change throughout my prep. Um, honestly, it all depends on where her injury is at. Um, sometimes you flare it up, sometimes you're feeling better, you're more stability from week to week. Sorry, let me slow down. <laughs> sometimes she has more stability from week to week, and then I'll flare it up, and we have to play it by ear, kind of. You know, every time she comes in, I'm asking her how she's feeling today. You know. Um, yeah, so we go by that. Um, but ultimately, I try to keep her between like a 15 rep range. Um, you know, like I said, it's just, it's, you know, this is not the easiest client, you know? <laughs> so it's all specific to me, really, with all the injuries that I have. But I would say we don't really lift to a low rep range, meaning like six to eight reps. It's very in infrequent for me. Yeah, it it depends, but it's... But it's infrequent for me personally. So we stay between around a 15, depending on if we're supersetting or not. Right now I'm doing kind of like a weird rep range. I'm doing 7, 10, and then 15. So. She, she's not the easiest, but she's the best. Cable kickbacks, kick fronts, the front leg extensions that I was doing. If you don't have that specific machine with the handles, I like to get a lat pull down bar and kind of hold it like a cane, and you can balance that way with it vertically. I'm 
Yeah, do you go to failure each set? Um, I'm going to let Chino answer this again because when I'm training with him, he's watching me um, every rep. I mean, right now he's coming in and talking to you guys, but normally he's watching me if I'm going to failure or not, so I'm going to let him answer that. Yeah, um, so first of all, first of all, we never go to listen to failure with her because that would just put her on. Uh, you know, it, it just wouldn't be good for her because the injuries would just flare up. Um, so we stop a couple reps shy sometimes, and like I said, depending on the day. But um, ideally, if I was training anybody else and they're like fresh, the joints is good, yeah, 100% we're going to go to the all the time. Um, besides some days we just back off a little. But ultimately, yeah, it's all about training hard and you know, hard as you, the hardest you possibly can. You know, um, and if not, we got to figure it out. You know, there's a lot of ways to uh, get this done. to stimulate a muscle by different intensity techniques and person can actually like go too heavy all the time and stuff. Um, so yeah, you can do supersets, you can do negatives, I mean, there's a lot of different things, right? Um, yeah, so it's not all about like heavy weight all the time, right? It's about form and whatever you can do, you know, but consistency is the key. Um, and just knowing what exactly are you stimulating is the most important thing, you know? You got some people that can train you, train you real hard, you can train yourself right, you can do drop sets, you can do rest poses, you can do it. There's a lot of ways to make it intense, to increase the intensity on the exercise. But my main thing is, what muscle are we actually stimulating? Do you understand that? Like, do we actually know which, not do you understand, but do you understand, like, your mechanics and what's going on and what muscle are you actually stimulating, you know? Because you may think you're actually stimulating your glutes, and it might be hip flexors, you know, it might be a combination of things, you know? Um, or quads or hamstrings and stuff like that, you know? So, yeah, I get a little more detail with stuff. Um, pun intended, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, but, you know. Hi, bodybuilder. Hi. If you're just tuning in, you're wondering why Chino's talking about sets and reps and all of that and intention. Um, someone asked us if we... Um, train to failure and how many reps I do per set. Um, it really depends on how I'm feeling, how my injuries are, if they're flaring up or not. If you're wondering what the hell we're talking about with that, I have a ton of injuries on my left side. Um, I'm just going to run them down real quick. I've got a torn labor in my hip, chronic hamstring tear. I have greater trochanter bursitis. I have L4, L5, S1, L5, S1, bulging discs. So we've got a lot of instability on my left leg that we're... <laughs> so that's what we're dealing with over here. So Chino has had the hard job of training me and getting creative with growing my legs without injuring me more or flaring up any of my old injuries. Believe it or not, she's finally, she's strong. Don't get it messed up. But on that stage though, on that day, she might not be as strong as some of them, but she's not strong for her. But watch the development. That's your answer. You see the signs, bro. Come on. Everybody get the 100 pound dumbbells and shit, right? How did she get on that stage? Oh, my God. 
side here to help her and spot I'm also watching to see if she shifts from one side to the other. Uh, we put that in, you know? This is how I know when to cut her toes, you know? Today was pretty good, but she wanted two more. I've said it a bazillion times, but I don't intend to impress anyone with how heavy I lift. We joke around that I'm not really that strong. But the thing is, I don't really care because when I step on, sh on stage, my physique is what matters, not how much I'm squatting. And to me personally, it keeps me safe and uninjured and doesn't really bother me. Yeah, and um, anybody that lifts heavy, that is great. It's not a problem. Uh, we're not counting anybody. I wish you could lift heavy. I wish you was better, you know? Uh, this is just your old jokes, you know? Because so ultimately what we're saying is, even lifting lighter than the other girls, you got to see her development. So it speaks for itself. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm mentioning it. Who's here? Thanks, Sarah. Glad you're enjoying it. Ask more questions. We're here to answer. We're going to do a drop set. Since Marco's here helping us, we're going to do a drop set. Because of you guys, Jackie's going to hate me. Right? So we're going to do an old, since we got done with all the people here today, we're going to do an old school drop set. The right way. We're going to show you guys how to do it. We're going to strip it while the bar is still on her. Okay? He's only doing this because I just said I don't care to lift heavy. Let's <laughs> go. I'm going to PR. I love that. I get a hammer. Sure, you know, but today she looked good. Her hip wasn't shifting to the side when she was squatting. There's nothing, you know, funky going on. Her ankle stability was there, her hip stability was there. So, yeah, you guys got lucky. By the way, 
I'm showing off with her because she's never done it before. But I know she can do a lot more than what she said, you know? So uh, I kind of didn't like what she said. Because I think more, <laughs> I think highly of her. Oh. You know? I know she's always do more. I can probably lift more than I think I can. I think with my injuries, I get scared. So having Chino here is good for me physically and mentally. Everything's a mind game, right? Mind over matter with everything. my usual training sessions uh, about an hour we're moving pretty quick today usually like 40 minutes to be honest um, warm up five or ten talk about the week progress how I'm feeling so I don't lift more than 60 minutes ever 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 unless he tells me I have to or I should um, but yeah no three-hour shoulder sessions not for me reps there now I know he didn't say it but he's watching my hip shift and my um, back and my hip is feeling a little unstable I can feel it he can see it so we're not pushing it any further than what we just did are there a certain amount of exercises we do per session um, that that's a Chino's too. question that varies also too depending on what the focus on that day sometimes parts um, it will be like two to three you know um, or sometimes, um, so like I said, I can't keep saying this alone. I mean, better than um, it's just it all depends on what's going on with her that day. Sometimes we have something planned, but um, I guess ultimately we'll do about three exercises for quads, um, two for hamstrings, um, for your hands. The next time we go, we might switch it up to just more volume on the you know, on the hands versus the quads, and you know, so yeah, yeah. Right now, I have two leg days a week primarily Monday and Friday. So um, we're doing more of a quad focus on one day and then more of a hamstring focus. And depending on how my hip's feeling is depending on when we throw in glutes. Um, again, the questions like that are kind of hard for Chino to answer because I'm kind of an anomaly. We do a lot of different things and it really just depends on how I walk in that day. Um, trying to keep up with recovery and icing and PT and all of my massage therapy, all of my rehab stuff that way. When I do come into him to train, it's not about, oh, what's hurting today? It's like, what feels good today? Um, but keep the questions coming. We're moving on from quads now. We're gonna hit some hamstrings, I believe. Um, today was more quad focused, so we probably won't do much hamstring work. And again, if you're just joining, we're doing legs at Pro Body in Mamaroneck. Um, training with Chino, I train Monday, Wednesday, Friday here. My training sessions are an hour long with him, probably about 40 to 45 minutes on the weights. And yeah, 
ask any questions that you have. Um, every lift that I do, I drink Evogen's Amino Jack. Right now it's blue raspberry, it's delicious. Um, it is BCAAs and that helps me recover. It also has glutamine in it to help with recovery. And while I'm on low calories, hitting legs, especially, um, it's helping me get through the workout and maintain muscle mass while depleting and losing body fat. Which is the ultimate goal with bodybuilding. Keep as much muscle as you have and drop body fat, not lose muscle. Oh, actually, no, you're right. From here is better. Yeah. So when I see um, most people do this exercise, they find it really hard to keep the hips down. Um, so we have like a little old school trick here where we actually curl up and then lift here. Basically what's happening when you're lifting the knees up there, you're actually extending the hips, which is also a hamstring um, stimulus. So the hamstrings are made to um, extend the hip and curl the leg up. So when you do this, when you actually you lift the knees up, you're actually incorporating both functions of that hamstring. And that's a better way to keep your hips down. I don't, I don't like to see nobody holding nobody's um, hip down like this. Like, I can't stand to see that. Twitch is on though. I just personally like it. Um, so usually what's going on is that it's hard to keep it down because the hip flexors are very tight. Or the rectus femoris kicks in, you know, um, which is also a hip flexor, which is that muscle she was doing over there. Um, so yeah, so you actually get more bang for your buck when you actually extend the hips, pushing your glutes, your, your, your hips into the bench by lifting the knees up. That's why RDLs hit the hamstrings, right? Because it's hip extension, right? You're extending the hips. So you're actually utilizing that function here when you actually pull your knees up. Um, so you hit it hamstring on the full function. Doing hip extension and turning the leg up. I can't confirm that I said that right. She's actually my speech coach. People don't know, she's actually my speech coach. <laughs> we're working on it. Yeah, so we're, we moved on to hamstrings. We did quads in the beginning, so we're winding back. I'm also going to post this onto my feed. So if you guys have any questions after watching the workout or scrolling through the workout, um, you can DM me with questions or comments, and then I will send them Chino's way also so he can answer them. Um, so I'm gonna give you a couple of variations of this exercise um, that actually make a difference, right? Um, you know when people do the leg curl holding the dumbbell, where they got like a diamond, put up the feet up and the flex, and they're holding the dumbbell, I like to hold the dumbbell between the feet. So point to point. Yeah. Point to, you know what? Yeah, come from the top. So if I, have, if I have put a dumbbell on her feet, this is how it would look. Right? So she actually going to perform this exercise in that position. I'm going to show you guys. Right here like that. Okay? Her feet are angled this way. And actually touching throughout the whole time. Okay? That's one. Now, there's a lateral part of the hamstring which is called the bicep femoris, which is this part on the outside, right? And that's activated through turning the feet out, okay? Most people don't notice. Have you ever seen do, everybody doing a lot of heavy leg curls and automatically put your legs down, rest up? And you see them, when they curl up, the feet actually turn out? It's because the bicep femoris is kicking in, all right? So, and it's a real unique part of the hamstring. It's the one that gives that, that, that nice sweep to the side when you're on stage. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with the bicep femoris, okay? So she basically gonna curl up, and when she gets to about 90 degree angle, she's going to turn her feet out of her, and also she's going to extend the hip and lift her knees up slightly. All right? And let's get started. Wait, 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 wait. Keep going. So the legs are gonna be straight down with the hip. Feet straight, you're gonna curl up, and then turn out and lift. No matter what, you're hitting the entire hamstring, 
but primarily it's a bicep femoris because, all right, I'm not going to turn it out of feet. It's going to rotation. So now we're going to do a similar to the dumbbell leg curl. Your knees a little closer together. And you point your toes, you plant and flex your feet, the neck and toes together, and you keep the feet out. And the heels out. Now lift. Continue with the lift. Right. Extend your hip by lifting the knees up. Exactly. Good. Okay. Right. Right. These curls are no joy. Always try to get those knees on the pad by extending the hip, squeezing your glutes. You're going to feel a deeper squeeze right in that hamstring. Exactly, stop there. So this exercise here is probably one of them um, ones that hurt a lot. Um, how is it today, John? It's okay. The end range hurts, but it's not bad. End range being the bottom. Yeah. You know, so usually what we do is I kind of like support the bottom, you know. Um, but I'm glad we're doing this because a lot of times we train and people don't need to know why we not just taking it to the basics. Why we not just doing it? Why we not doing that? And let me tell you something. I don't judge a lot of people when they train somebody because I really don't know the dynamics of what's going on in that situation. Um, but yes, I'm glad we're doing this because the development speaks for itself and it's a whole different approach. So when you ask me what hurts, um, when I get to the bottom range, to the bottom of the uh, leg curl, I can feel it deep in my hip joint, which is one of my injuries. Um, so again, with my physique and my injuries, we just try to stay away from flaring anything up too badly so that I can continue with my leg workouts and continue growing and also practice my routine. Um, so he supports me at the bottom a little bit so I'm not in pain. It's not that my um, my pain tolerance is low or anything or that I can't lift the weight that he's given me. It's that we're trying to protect. So we're going to fo focus on the, the bicep femoris, which is the lateral side of the hamstring, so she can have more sweep to the hamstring when she's doing those side shots, right? And this is how you get it. You get the feet turned out and lift those knees up. So we're going to look at it from this angle here. Right. And also, I like to actually keep it functional where she's coming down and actually turning the feet inward or just straight down and then curling it right. Because that's going to stretch the bicep femoris even more. Right? Oh, turn it out. Yeah, exactly. Good. Look really different. You see it right on the outside of that action. Right. Now put it together and then go to the right. Let's go. 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 let us go let us Alright, you gotta see the hands going on. Alright, you good. So we're gonna go and do some Romanian deadlifts. By the way, you see how jacked up her body looks? <laughs> she looks crazy. Every day she looks better. It's wild, yo. But um, we haven't changed too much in this prep, but um, we about to. She ain't gonna be happy. She don't know what's coming. But um, it's crunch time, you know, and um. She will be, you know what, one of the things I love working with Jacqueline, every show she got better. There was not one show where we say she wasn't.